All right, hi, I'm Paul Kuhn with theclutchpedal.com, and we're going to show you today how to change the brakes on a 2003 Honda Pilot. This is Ty Taylor. He's going to be our guide, and uh, this is his truck, SUV, SUV. family crossover vehicle thing. Um, so we're going to show you how to change the front. What are we doing? Pads and discs. Yeah, we'll do pads and discs. And the back pads and discs. So when you need to do it, you know how to. Cool. All right, so what we're doing now, first thing, is we're loosening the, the um, lug nuts on, on the wheel before you lift up the car, because if you wait till you lift up the car, it's just going to spin while you try and loosen them. Yeah. So we're just loosening them so that once we get it up, they'll be faster to come off. Okay, so as you can see, we've lifted the vehicle with a hydraulic jack. We've secured it with a jack stand that's very important. Um, you never want to be working around or underneath a vehicle that's supported by a hydraulic jack because the jack may fail and in turn you may fail. Um, so uh, now we're just going to take off the lug nuts which is a 19 millimeter metric um, and then we can remove the wheel. Yeah and as we said earlier we've already loosened them so now we're it's just removing all of them. To get them all. Because as you can see the wheel spins freely so it makes it about impossible to take off this car's elevated unless yeah. you got an impact so and you don't want to do that unless you have to okay so what we'll do now is you see we got the wheel removed no issues there um the first thing you'll do is you want to take the caliper um off now you notice this is the caliper this is the caliper bracket now if you're just doing pads all you need to do is take the caliper off that's a 12 millimeter bolt and you'll notice that being a Honda everything's going to be metric so don't get any bright ideas that you're going to use standard on anything so there's two bolts you're going to have to loosen both of them but now if, like I said before if you're just doing pads the easiest thing to do is remove one bolt slide the caliper down change out your pads uh, in this case we're not doing that we're going to remove everything so we can replace the rotor and we'll get to that okay so i've loosened both of the bolts i take this bolt all the way out and then you'll rotate the caliper upwards and just rest it you may need a string or a tie or another set of hands but um then you can have access to your pads which you notice they just slide right out um, no need to really, Honda's pretty good about using the same inboard and outboard pads. Some cars aren't like that, but uh, there's not really a difference ex besides the wear indicator. Um, so you take those out, go ahead and pop your hardware off. I recommend replacing that every single time. Okay. Um, so we'll take that off. Let me see the hardware. Yeah, sure. All right, so what Ty was saying about the hardware is basically it's, it's this thing right here. I'm going to refocus. Um, it's a little blurry. Yeah, but. basically these keep the pads uh, in an ideal location. Um, they wear out just like brake pads, just like everything else. And, I mean, normally if you buy a premium set of pads, they'll come with them. Some do, some don't. Um, but a lot of people reuse and reuse these. But, you know... Going 30, 60, however that many thousand miles you got on your brakes, um, it's a good idea. And it'll definitely help with it. So, like I said, we're going to do more than just the pads. We're going to do the rotor also. So the caliper needs to come all the way off. So what you'll do is remove the other 12 millimeter bolt and set the caliper up out of the way. Anywhere you can find a spot. Like I said, this is when some string or something of that nature comes in. Right, because it's connected by the brake line, right? Yeah, and you don't really want to remove that unless you're bleeding, and we're not going to be doing anything like that, so hopefully. Um, so now we'll go and we'll remove the 17 millimeter bolts that hold the bracket on. Um, so. I probably would recommend using a breaker bar for this. You never really want to put any more torque on your ratchet than you have to. Um, and these may not come off too easy, so we'll see how they go. That's bad. Uh, that probably explains why torque. ratchets aren't doing that well. I have a whole lot of leverage with this, a lot more leverage than a ratchet would. And they've been off before, so 
no big deal. You just got to be careful. So, even with lifetime warranty stuff from Craftsman, or last whoever, um, there's no need in just senselessly breaking a ratchet because they're not really designed to break bolts, no matter who you talk to. Huh. So we'll take these bolts out and remove the bracket and take the bracket off. Now, once we get this out of the way, we'll be able to remove the rotor. Now, something you'll notice, Honda, along with some other manufacturers, use these screws right here to hold the rotor on. Now, these are going to have to be removed. Um, a normal screwdriver normally won't do it. You're going to need an impact driver. Now, as you can see, mine turn, which apparently, as you can see, the damage on the screws, or maybe you can't, but these have been removed before. Like I said, these rotors have been replaced in the past, and somebody must have just lightly put them on. Now, if you're still dealing with factory, which normally in 03, you're probably not, um, you're going to need an impact driver. An impact driver looks like this. And what this will do is this will turn you'll put the bit inside here lock it in and you'll basically put this on there and hit it with a hammer and what this will do is push in and turn at the same time it's a great little tool to have uh, for some little assembly parts um, but that'll help a lot like I said these have been out before and I can just turn them with a screwdriver no problem now the other thing I now, there's no need to put these back in. They serve no function once the car leaves the assembly plant. Um, I would recommend not putting them back in. If you do, um, don't over tighten them or get some new ones from Honda. Don't go to the hardware store and try to match it up. It's not a good idea. Um, it's just gonna cause more problems and they're only a buck or two from Honda, if you don't believe me. But trust me, they serve no purpose. It's merely for assembly. Now your rotor should slide off. If it doesn't, give it a couple wax with a rubber mallet. Uh, if you're replacing the rotors, a sledge, um, you want to be more careful if you're getting them turned down. We're replacing, so you can hit them whatever you want. Luckily these just slip right off. But you'd be surprised what a little bit of rust can do to hold a rotor on. So now we'll just start cleaning everything. It's also a good time to check your uh, hub bearing. Um, which normally they'll give you a little bit of indication, some noise, something like that. Um, but you never know. How do you um, check it? Checking it uh, <laughs> is kind of a little bit more difficult. It's actually easier to check these, um, besides visually, you know, with the wheel on, because you get a little bit more leverage, you can wiggle it up and down a little bit. Um, I don't see, besides some surface rust, I don't see anything. So just like a visual and inspection. I, yeah, and I've never heard any noises. Normally, you know, you'll hear some noises beforehand. Yeah, um, like if you drive around with your windows down, you'll hear grinding yeah, or something. Yeah, well, yeah, it kind of starts off as a little whistling, and, and it'll get worse and worse and worse and, until it's just unbearable to drive. Um, or they'll heat up and melt together, and you'll just be up the creek. But, uh, like I said, this one I'm pretty sure is okay. Um... This vehicle's got about 115,000 miles on it, so it's not unlikely for these to go out probably sometime soon. Okay, so we got the old rotor off. I'm gonna put the new rotor on. Um, it really doesn't matter how it goes on. Um, for some reason, even though you don't need them, I still like to line up the bolts, uh, some kind of thing in my head. Um, and you can also see we've removed the caliper bracket. We've cleaned it up a little bit. Um, most of it really doesn't matter whether it's dirty or not. The only thing you really want to clean real good is right in here where the hardware goes on. Um, What'd you clean that with? Oh, uh, just some brake cleaner. Okay. Uh, clean it off with some brake cleaner and uh, some rags. No big deal there. And uh, same thing with the rotor. Um, majority of rotors you buy are covered in oil. That keeps them from rusting in the box uh, so you don't get a hot mess whenever you open up the box. But um, if you don't clean them with some brake cleaner and wipe them down good, um, you're putting you know oil in between your two friction surfaces. It's not good. It takes long for the pads to seat and it's a mess. So uh, 
So what would clean you those use? with brake cleaner too? Yeah, clean those with brake cleaner, spray it off. And um, then just towel it off? Yeah, just towel it off. It doesn't take, you know, it's just a real thin film. It doesn't take much to get it off. Uh, same thing with the caliper. Um, you pretty much want to uh, clean the uh, inside and outside surfaces of the caliper, where the brake pads go, the rest of it. Brush it off, do whatever you want with it. It doesn't really matter. Um, now, as far as the hardware, like I said, I always do the hardware. I just think it makes everything last longer. Um, I said maybe some of that's in your head. But um, this particular kit comes with clips and boots. So as you can see, we've ditched uh, the old boots, which they get nasty. This is what keeps dirt and water out of the pins. Um, so all that's gone, thrown it away. Um, we're going to keep the Cowper uh, guide pins. They look good. You want to look for wear. And uh, if there's no grease on them, whenever you take them out, it's probably a pretty good sign you need new ones. But you wipe them off good um, and look for grooves. Or if they're very difficult to get out, that means that you ran out of lubrication and uh, you need to replace them. And luckily, or hopefully, your uh, calipers didn't lock up in the process. Now, uh, Honda, a couple other manufacturers have uh, a bushing on the end of the caliper pin. Most of those will come in the kit. This kit comes with it. So we're going to pop that off and replace that too. Um, so we'll do all that. But um, So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and pop these boots in. Um, they're not really side specific or anything. It may take a little bit of uh, kind of just messing around to get them in there right. Okay, so we cleaned up everything. Um, so there's two important things. One thing is you want everything clean. Uh, replace the hardware that you can replace. And the third thing is lubrication. Um, your caliper pins are, are what um, the caliper moves back and forth. That, as it's squeezing and releasing, um, you're going to be moving on these caliper pins. So it's very important to grease um, the, uh, the holes where they go in. Uh, the actual caliper bolts, uh, all your hardware. I would go ahead and put some grease on the back of your uh, your brake pads and on the sides of the caliper. Pretty much grease anywhere is fine except for on the actual friction material on the rotor. So you don't want anything on this side, that side of the friction surface. Same thing pads. with the brake pads. Yeah. You know, this side is good, this side bad. Right. So. Other than that, you're pretty much good. So we'll put on these new boots that I got. And then we'll go ahead and stick the pins in because we can stick the pins in. Which the boots came with the new hardware. Yeah, boots came with the new hardware kit. And they're like um, weather seals for the uh, pins. Exactly, yeah. They keep water, dirt, stuff like that out. Which, I mean, they're good. You know, they're rubber, so they're going to wear out um, eventually. So you want to switch them out each time just to be safe to keep from having yeah, I mean, excessive wear? Yeah, I mean, maybe not every time. Um, I don't think these have ever been replaced before, and they don't really show any real signs of wear, but hey, we bought them. So. And a lot of kits now, they come with them anyway. Uh, right. A lot of hardware kits are starting to come with those. Um, so we'll go ahead and put the boots on. We'll go ahead and put the uh, caliper pins on, which, like I said before, kind of make a mental note of which end the uh, um, the uh, the bolt with the little bushing goes in. Now this is something you'll see too. Now we packed that thing full of grease, which is good, but you may have to work at getting this thing in. And when you do, it's probably going to pop all that loose grease on you. But like I said, that's normally a good sign that you got plenty of grease in there. But just get it in there. Make sure the boot the uh, boots all the way seated up against the bolt. Um, and you won't have any issues. Then you know a lot of y'all probably asking like, well, what's the deal with the bushing? And I have no clue um, why one bolt has a bushing and why one doesn't. Um, yeah, if anybody wants to enlighten us in the comments below, feel free. Yeah, uh, Honda engineers, um, any any ideas? Who knows? But anyway, it's probably gonna take a second or two of kind of going back and forth to get it all the way on there. But don't get frustrated; it's fine. Um, and then once you get all that back in there, um, you can put the bracket back on. Which again, those were 17 millimeter bolts. And we'll just pop this thing back on there. And uh, yeah, see like that happens. But uh, 
No worries. We'll bolt it up, and then uh, and then we'll slide the brake pads on, and we'll go from there. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll just tighten these up. Now, using your ratchet on these is fine. Um, you're not really going to be able to over tighten them, um, so no real worries there. Um, but as you can see, we got the bracket back on. Then we'll go ahead and we'll put the hardware on. We'll slip the pads in, and then we'll put the caliper back on. Um, so just a good, nice and tight. It doesn't have to be excessive. They're not going to come back off as long as you've got a good half inch drive uh, ratchet and you give it a little tug, you'll be fine. Um, so we'll put the pre-lubed uh, hardware back on. Now the only time you might be almost kicking yourself about those bolts we didn't put back on is right now, uh, you see the wheel is what holds the rotor on. Um, right now there's nothing. I think this is actually why last time I put the nuts back in. But anyway. Um, we'll stick the hardware in, and of course I got the wrong side, let's see. Yeah, and the whole reason you grease the hardware is so that it, it basically, sometimes you hear brakes squeaking and they're not actually worn out, it's because sometimes this hardware is vibrating or rubbing, um, and so yeah. you want to make sure everything's greased so that you don't have any sort of uh, premature squealing or noise. Yeah, same thing with the back of the pads, which sound, as everybody knows, is what? It's vibration. Um, so that's why you normally see, uh, and most pads will come with some kind of shim. These are kind of like some higher end pads, so they actually have uh, a couple coats of shim on there, but I'm still going to put some grease on there. And all that does is insulate it. Um, you know, you're not going to hear as much noise because it's not metal on metal, now it's metal on... Grease metal, metal, rubber, shim, etc., yeah. and grease. So, um, with your hardware, just make sure you give it a little push. Yeah, you just should kind of snap it. Pop it in. Yeah. But either way, the pads aren't going to go in unless it's locked in, so no worries. Um, but once we get these kind of locked in, uh, the other thing you'll notice is the parts that I was talking about not getting grease on. Obviously, I've gotten grease back on, but we'll go over that in a second. Um, the best thing to do is once you're done, give the rotor and a little wipe down, and that'll keep everything uh, clean. Um, now, I may have said this before, but the wear indicator goes on the inside pad. Um, if one pad's going to go out first, it's pretty much almost always going to be your inside pad. That's the side. This is, you know, kind of a floating caliper. You only have one put piston, and it's pushing this side. It's just the the force that actually pushes the other side. And so on. the wear. So the wear indicator is what actually makes the squealing noise? Yeah. Right. What this so will do is instead of, of the, yeah, instead of the friction surface hitting the rotor, you got this metal tab hitting it. Makes an awful noise. Kind of lets you know ahead of time. Lets you know to get new brakes before yeah. they start failing on you. Yeah, before it's too late kind of thing. Um, so we'll go ahead and slip the pads in there. Um, you know, for some people, it's probably going to be easier to put the caliper on first, then slip the pads on. I've done this one before. It's not really pads don't really just fall out. Some cars you'll see that. I mean that's just kind of one of those things where it's going to be trial and error. If you're watching this video and you're thinking like, hey, well I don't drive a Honda Pilot. I drive a Honda Accord. I drive a Toyota Corolla, whatever. You know, there's a lot of interchangeability uh, with this video. Um, you know, it's a lot of the same concepts. Um, you know, you're not going to know what size bolts maybe you're going into. But um, the, the overall build, like the I, overall design, is Nissan is Altimas, similar. Mazda Miatas, they're all yeah, fairly similar. Yeah, I mean similar. everything's everything's Every, going to be pretty. You want to you want to do some research on your specific, but this kind of gives you a good idea. Yeah. So the idea is um, we use the C clamp. Uh, they make a couple of different kinds of tools. Some go in between. Um, this one, the bolts, the hose is kind of in an awkward position, but it's okay. You can push off this still. The idea is, you know, as the pads wear down, um, the caliper is going to sit out a little larger. So you put in fresh new pads, fresh new rotor. You got a little bit more surface area. Um, so you're going to have to compress the caliper a little bit. So we'll do that. And then um, once we've done that, we can put the caliper back on. Um, now the other thing I'll tell you is um, there's a lot of differing opinions on how to compress a caliper. Um, me, 
I've never had any problems slapping a C clamp on there and going to town compressing it. Some people will tell you uh, with a car with anti lock brakes, you need some special tools. Um, like I said, I've never needed anything special. Um, not to say that uh, maybe I am just do have been dodging bullets for years now. Um, some people say you need a clamp. Some people say you need to crack the bleeder screw. I've heard a lot of different things. The idea is that with the ABS hydraulics being a little bit more complicated, um, you may unseat some of the little needle valves. Things won't work quite right. Like I said, I've never had any issues, um, but do it at your own risk. Um, I mean, the whole thing is, is you always want to look in the owner's manual, or not the owner's manual, sorry, a repair manual like a Hanes or something like that. Just see if they say if there's any specific procedure they want you to go through. Um, the other thing, as far as bleeding goes too, same thing in this case, we're not removing any brake fluid. We're just kind of relocating, pushing it back up. So no need to bleed. Um, some people get confused about when to bleed. Um, or how to bleed stuff like that, but we're not really going to get into that um, But let me just say it is different with anti brakes. So we'll slap this on we'll tighten these up and Then we'll be pretty much home free and the two bolts here um, now it's probably a good time to uh, Kind of just check everything out, you know, I mean there's not a lot of bolts and not a lot of pieces we had to remove but it's a good time to make sure your boots are locked in so they don't come loose and you get dirt or whatever in there. Um, you know, we just tighten these. We know they're tight. Um, check your caliper bracket bolts too. Make sure those are tight. Um, other than that, um, double check the hose. Um, I was a little rough on my brake hose. You want to be a little bit more careful than I probably was in this video um, because you really don't want to replace it unless you have to. Um, but, you know, just be careful you know where you lay the caliper like I said the best thing to do is just tie it up with some string um, I get kind of lazy sometimes so I don't do that um, but just check everything out the other thing you probably want to do is push the rotor all the way up in it and just kind of move it back and forth we're not going to get a whole lot of movement because it's front wheel drive and it's in gear um, which is a good thing because uh, we don't want it to move but um, it's also a good time to go ahead and uh, Rotate a little bit if you can. Um, spray off uh, all this grease that we got on there. So we'll do that. We'll put the wheel back on and uh, just go ahead and we'll do the other side. The other thing to keep in mind, I would do, um, it's kind of been, you know, a habit since, uh, you know, I was uneasy about doing brakes, you know, years ago. Uh, just do one side at a time. Don't try to do both sides because then you always have a reference point. You know, try to do this side. If you get confused on where a clip goes, if you get confused on where a bolt goes, go look at the other side. Um, so you're saying have both sides jacked up, do one side, then you can go back. Yeah, and then you can side. go back and do the other. Um, it's not a big deal, you know. It's not going to hurt anything to do one thing at a time, but I would highly recommend that. Just do one side and uh, don't even mess with the other side. Just leave it alone. And that way, um, like I said, you have a good reference point. Don't get yourself in any trouble. And I, I think that's about it. We'll put the wheel on. We'll lower it. And uh, <laughs> hopefully yours goes a little bit smoother. Maybe you guys are stronger than me. Um, or more coordinated, one or the other. Uh, so put the wheel back on. Put the nuts back on. Now remember, don't try to tighten them until you get the, the car back on the ground. Uh, um, but once you get the nuts on... You basically want uh, to make sure that the nuts pull, to pull the wheel onto the, the actual disc. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, just make sure everything's tight. I mean, if you want to get, uh, um, just get it a little bit tight. It doesn't have to be anything major. Um, but also, I would recommend um, doing another little spin test. Um, you may hear some like light scraping, but if everything went right, you really should be pretty quiet whenever you spin the wheel. But if the wheel doesn't spin, um, or doesn't move freely at all, um, you did something wrong. Um, the other thing I would recommend is um, once you get done with both sides, um, just back it up in the driveway or parking lot a little bit very slowly. 
you know, we pushed fluid back um, so the pedal may feel like it's falling to the floor and there's no resistance. Um, that's normal um, as long as it comes back. Just but once you get right. a couple of pumps in there, you should be fine. Um, if you don't, if you don't get your brake, brake pedal feel back, then something's wrong. Uh, so, but we'll get these nice and tight and then we'll lower the vehicle. And like I said, I would do a couple little stops at something really safe, like you five, want to, 10 miles an hour. You want to demo the spin test? You just spin the wheel, is that all you do? Yeah, yeah, I mean, just move it back and forth a little bit, whatever your right, transmission for noise. and drivetrain will let you do. And just kind of listen for noise. Like, I mean, I don't hear anything on this, which is good. Sometimes you'll, you'll hear like a very light, you know, because the brake pads just rest on the rotor anyway, so you'll hear a real light, like, kind of sound, but it shouldn't be major. If the wheel doesn't turn, or you hear like a really hard grinding sound, then probably something's wrong. And I would take it back apart and take another look at it. Alright, well, thanks for um, watching. This is theclutchpedal.com, and hopefully we're going to have some more videos, maybe do some Miata stuff. We'll figure it out. Let us know what you think, what you want to see, and uh, we'll do our best to do it. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Also, make sure you subscribe. Bye. Filming. Okay. So we'll. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we got a little bit.